drop down slightly below that level. But anyway, I, we will we'll work on the basis that we are going to get a doubling of the program take up. You're all familiar with that? Transition. A year, 18 months ago, we were an RSGB committee uh, and we then moved to a registered UK company, Islands on the Air, IOTA Limited. It is not for profit, limit guarantee, it's all official, known to the authorities and so on. But we are partnered with the RSGB and our relations with the RSGB are excellent. So I have to say that and uh, it's true. Do you like it? Well, that is the Islands on the Air Limited logo, the one for the company. And we're very pleased with it. We think it represents what we are doing uh, very well. Our targets in the first year were the viability of the company. Of course, that has to be the first target to maintain the integrity of the program, to launch a new website attractive to the community, to introduce, and this is a major one, QSO matching as the main route, the main route to award credit, but not the only route, the main route, to achieve minimum 50% growth, program growth in credits issued. We've achieved our first target in spades. We have money in the bank, even after paying all the IT project development costs and having paid a fortune in getting 150 IOTA trophies from China. We had to go to China to get them. And that was a very substantial expenditure item. And we've submitted accounts to Companies House. And we are described by HMRC as a micro entity. That does for your self respect to be regarded as a micro entity. I'm not sure when you become um, something other than a micro entity but uh, we are at the present moment and they don't really want to know anything much about us for the next two or three years but they could come in and ask us if we suddenly made millions or something like that but the chances of that right we set up friends of iota and we were very encouraged by the response we got. And we, ha we have in the past, I think it's uh, something like uh, 14, 16 months, raised 23,300 pounds to date. And the next two lines have never been publicized. You are the first people to see those figures. I are currently raising 20,000 pounds a year, but half of is covered by expenses. So don't go and think that we've got that amount of money. We have expenses and increasingly as we grow, we will have more expenses. But that figure has not previously been made public. But the thing is in two months or three months time, you'll be able to see it anyway in our accounts, which we have to submit to company's house. So what's the point of keeping it quiet? To maintain our high priority, activity is well supported, and is often it's the only activity, only pile-ups on the bands. News items get a lot of coverage, increasingly so 
in the, from the DX information providers. They're always after uh, IOTA information. They'd love to have articles and so on. We can say without hesitation we are the second program only to DXCC. There, there really is no other competitive activity program which comes anywhere close to us. And of course, our standing increased with the new website. Well, we've launched in the last three weeks. I don't know how many of you have looked at the new website, but we have launched it. It's still there. It hasn't, it hasn't uh, buckled under the pressure. And uh, it replaces the previous IT software completely with a state-of-art bespoke system. I have to say the previous IT did us very well, and we do thank Dom and mine for that. And uh, it, 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 it started in 2007, and it, it's lasted 10 years, and uh, uh, it is, is, a, is a good system, and, but we just had to move forward. And you know, it's we are majoring on the confirmation of contacts that way. That way, previously, an update we would get 20, perhaps on average, 20 contacts um, claimed. Now, on average, we're getting 50 or 60. So it is a significant increase. In terms of new applications, something like uh, uh, one in every three. Uh, update stroke applications is a new one. And in many of those, they have no paper QSLs, but only uh, QSO matches. And I have to say that we're very grateful to Clublog because they are the QSO main agency. No doubt some of you may ask about LOTW, and we have actually got some information as of one o'clock yesterday morning from the Wells, who has been over there talking to uh, ARRL. Well, we've, we, for many months, we ran QSO matching on the old system. And uh, it, it worked very well. And we've now introduced it on the, uh, on the, 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 new, the new system. Uh, there were one or two bugs. Uh, well, not so much bugs. There were lack of synchronization, I think, may be the best way of putting it, um, in the filtering between the old system and the new system. But um, our IT uh, manager has more or less sorted that out. And currently, 54.5% of total credits are by QSO matches. But on the 17th of September, the day before we actually launched, the figure was 73%. The reason for that drop is that there was a period of a fortnight where we moved from one to the other and we obviously lost a few applications. We'll recover those, but the figure as of uh, a few days ago was 54.5. Ah, now, this is where this comes in useful. Where are we? There we are. Right. Uh, Caesar wanted it all in, in, in graph, graph form, and he has got some of those, and he can say a few words about them. 2015, the, first, the last year, full year, before we uh, got involved in QSO matching. 877 number of applications, 59,000 credits given, of which 5.1% were matched QSOs. They were the contest, the IOTA contest ones, because we have been matching IOTA contest ones uh, for many years now. 
2016 was a split year because in July of that year, you will, you will see, started on the 4th of July, we introduced QSO matching on the old system. And for the rest of the year, there was a boost and it took us up to 65, 66,000 with 1045 submissions. But 24%, so it had a significant initial effect. 2017 now, which is part under the old system, under the old uh, website, and the rest will be under the new website. We've estimated for the year 1,300 submissions, 87,000 credits. Not a 100% increase, but we're on the way. Now these are subsections. Uh, July, because, uh, as I say, we introduced uh, QSO matching on the 4th of July. So compared with the two years, 5% for IOTA, uh, uh, IOTA contests, and it went up to 39% in those six months between 2015, 2016, July to December. And you'll see the increase there. Then uh, the honor roll uh, produces Five, up to 500, you see there, 497, 486, up to 500 application updates uh, in the month of January alone. So that is a significant an amount of the total of the submissions. And you will see there that we jumped significantly. And now if you look at up to a few days ago, where we are in 2016, 17, you will see Perhaps not such a large increase in submissions, but a 53.5% increase in credits given. And that is because we, uh, the average submission has 60 cars rather than 20 cars. Now, I'm going to give you a different voice because Caesar is going to, and I give this to him, I lend it to him, you see, yeah. uh, and he's going to speak it's about just, the, to, the, the, to, to, the shape to, of it. To show over the last, uh, well, 10, 11 years, uh, how, how the applications progressed so that you have a little bit of an idea where we stood and where we stand. So these are the last two years, right? This is what we're going to expect this year, and I think it's relatively conservative, uh, and this is last year do uh, data. And you can see how it looks. The green line is the total credits, again, the last two years. Um, the credits by QSL, they kind of taken a dip, and they probably will continue to, to dip. Uh, whereas the, um, the um, electronic credit, right now just QSO matching through Clublog, probably in the future Clublog and LOTW are have already increased, you know, have already surpassed that. And that is financial um, uh, take. This is just what the program raises. There's nothing, doesn't appear here, um, you know, the costs associated. So within, let's say, the last two years, um, you know, there's a significant increase also in the viability of the program. Um, and then we go further. Back to okay. Roger. Okay. Thank you. Well, these are fairly obvious, except club log QSO matching, IOTA contest matching, and paper QSLs. And that is the order in which the, uh, when you enter an application, it will expect you to, to go for club log QSO matching first. We want to, we've changed it from the old system where it was the last one. We've altered it now as the, t as the top one. So that if you have a choice of the card or a QSO match, the preference has to be for the QSO match. Uh, the reason is because it uh, eliminates mistakes in transcription of your, contest, of your contact onto the system. And we do allow payment direct to IOTA Limited. Nothing goes through headquarters, uh, RSGB headquarters, no longer. And we uh, still allow payments to be made through checkpoints. Uh, it saves time and money if you 
if we if you pay direct to iota limited because actually with paypal there is a paypal charge and most applicants um, are not absorbing that charge but the charge gets taken by the by us so there is in fact a four percent something like that reduction in what actually we get but we're, we're not so worried but of course club log matching depends on having having your log on club log because otherwise it won't happen and there is a built-in delay and those of you who are at Friedrichshafen may have heard me talking about a 60-day delay since then we've seen the light and we've decided to reduce it to 30 days the credit is given it does mean that someone who works in IOTA five minutes ago and wants to see it credited on the system won't be able to he will allow it will need 30 days before it goes on the system the reason for it and there has to be a reason for it to allow possible validation because we can, it's always more difficult to delete credits from the system uh, after they have been given than before they are given so we it's a defense mechanism, I have to be honest. It's a defense mechanism that we allow ourselves 30 days. So if we get an operation and one or two people shout at us that this is not a 100% genuine operation, we have that 30 days. It puts the pressure on Caesar because he's in charge of the, seat of the validation area and it does mean that he doesn't have that much time to, to do the check. And it particularly if the voice of complaint comes quite late, it means that we uh, uh, have to fairly quickly and put a warning up. If there, is, if there is a significant complaint about an operation, we'll put a warning on the system, which means that we will, it'll con continue be beyond 30 days. Hmm. No, it's the, you're, you're quite right. It's, we're talking basically about short-term operations with a beginning, a first and a last date. We're not talking about resident uh, islanders or, or, or anything like that. It wouldn't apply to a G station or something like that. Well, I, I, I hope it wouldn't. I, I have to say, all this is new to us. So if any of you guys are going to ask complicated IT questions... You may not get the answer you want because we may not know the answer. No, no, well, th this is not a very complicated answer uh, question, but um, there are only so much of the, you know, we have a list of priorities we, we're working on. And for example, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this mm. is just, you know, we, we have to continue and we'll, we'll get into this in the answers or questions and this, but we don't have a VHF QSO matching for now. Why? Um, not because there's any disregard. I, 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 I am on VHF, but it's not because uh, the, we have a disregard, but the, the larger population, the larger populace, uh, we kind of have to go with that. And all the major problems we have to solve are, you know, but it's, it's are, are we the have? But there's, we have a long, very long list of priorities, and definitely we'll go to the point where, as yeah, a resident, you know, resident stations yeah, cannot, shouldn't. Uh, right now, they may suffer of the same thing because the software has just been, you know, implemented on the new, um, um, in the new IT system. And, uh, you know, we just want to make sure that this works flawlessly. It's all a question of priorities. That, yeah. that, that's the particular but, thing. But and absolutely right. Yes. stations. Yes. Now, the downsides, and to be one or two downsides, there is no listing of forthcoming expeditions available to you. Um, this is better served by a number of DX information providers. And they are able actually to update you and put a note on that uh, this operation 
uh, has been delayed by fog on the island, or they cannot get uh, uh, get onto the island, or it's or it's being cancelled, or whatever. They have that kind of possibility. Under the old system, we never really had that possibility. We just didn't have the manpower to make it happen. So we we uh, are not for the public providing a list of forthcoming expeditions. We are collecting in advance because there is a, a, a shield. Uh, sorry, there is a screen, which will allow us to collect data on operations. But that is then reviewed after the operation, uh, uh, because not all operations start on the date they say they will start. And often, under the old system, no alteration was made, so we may get wrong information into the system. Uh, I do apologize, but just uh, to give the guys a feeling, 15% of all the IOTA operations we track from most wanted islands within the first 50% as of the last 21 months have been either cancelled or postponed beyond this interval of time. There's a considerable number of... See that you have some more work, this, this one, these, these two screens. Okay, uh, let's go very I allowed quickly. him into my presentation. That's a dangerous thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because um, he, he added one or two, one or two of, these, of these additional screens. Just, just to give, uh, to give uh, the guys a few more numbers so they, they can have a feeling of you know, what this is all about. Um, this is just the, the statistics for the um, 21 months, January 1st, September 23rd, last year and a half, whatever. We were tracking all operations, this is just as I mentioned earlier, um, and um, that are, uh, we, we validate the operations that are less than 30% on the most wanted listing, which uh, is not anymore done based on club, based on the listing that was published by the directory, but it's an online, real-time uh, tracking. So an operation which might have been a few, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, 29.4%, uh, if now it's 30 0.6, well, probably we're not going to ask validation, or we can. And of these, we, track, we also track all the operations which are below 50% um, uh, on the most wanted list, which have been 589. This comes to about 21 operations per month, one operation a day, uh, of which 34.5%, roughly eight operations a month or two operations per week would be... Um, validated of those um, would, would enter that. Now, by validation, and this is something that will give you a flavor of, as to why and how we, we, do, we do things, there are five um, particular uh, elements which we need in order to uniquely describe an operation. And um, why we need all this stuff? Because uh, as we move and as the number, as the load work increases, we do need more filters to help us uh, provide both the checkpoints and the administrator, uh, in this case Roger, uh, with the work that, it, that he can handle uh, as opposed to what he used to do. So this would be the call sign, the island name, the IOTA reference, start day and time, and date and time. So if somebody has um, taken a two, three, four islands, which are part of two, three iotas in, Polyne in French Polynesia, uh, within, say, three weeks, and operates with the same call sign for all of them, and loads only one log at LOT LOTW or club log, we would like to have all this information, or otherwise we cannot provide the match. Um, next one is that... Um, as of today, um, as of today, literally, uh, we can only match logs that have a similar name, identical name, to that of the call sign used. So, for example, if somebody used um, YB0, uh, y YB8 Oscar from a number of islands, which actually it's, an, it's a call sign that has been used, unless it's, it's uploaded as such and not... Uh, as it was loaded, um, um, YB8 Oscar underscore the name of the island, they had two or three operations like this, we can provide a match for those. It's just, uh, and that, the reason for that is because you don't have, you haven't logged the respective station, uh, YB8 Oscar underscore the name of the island or underscore Oceania 2222 or whatever that was. Uh, you, have, you have logged it, you know, YB, uh, YB8 
Oscar, and that is how it has to be matched. However, um, we think, uh, we, we, we estimate that within the next weeks, we will be taking the big burden of providing, um, uh, you know, um, a, a match for those two. Uh, now, why is that kind of important? Well, at this point, uh, our database, which has been uh, very carefully um, um, uh, put together by, by Roger over, well, a long time <laughs> ever, uh, has about 65,000 operations. An operation is defined by the parameters that I just mentioned to you earlier. Island name, IOTA, call sign, and, and start. Yeah. Um, we can only provide QSO matching for about 5,000 of them, which represents about 8%. Even if we uh, expand this to um, the, well, some people call it funny log names, or I call them abnormal log names, I don't know, non-standard log names, uh, you, you will see that a huge improvement, maybe with the OTW, that will be a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> now, of the 296 operations which are on Club Log, of the 589, 80, uh, 589 we tracked last year, so 50% are on, only 50% of IOTA operations uh, f at most wanted islands with the first 50% are on club log. Of these, 80% are matched as of today. There are 10 of those which are delayed or have been delayed. The operators have uh, the possibility of, of delaying the operations either because they want to raise some more um, finances from, uh, from, um, from, the, from the cards or for other reasons. Uh, that also includes, um, but of these 10, some of them, some of the logs are released after certain periods of time, six, time, six months, three months, a year. So there, there are no more than four operations out of the 296 on club log, which have been delayed at any given point in time, simultaneously. Uh, but I put them separately just to give you an idea that that represents 3% of all the logs at club log. It's just a minute. Uh, you know, um, percentage. And as far as the different log names, funny log names, or whatever you want to call them, they're about 15%, which we hope to, you know, implement the procedure for uh, over, the next, uh, over the next little while. Um, it is not going to be very easy, um, but uh, we had got, and I, 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 I'm using again uh, this, this, um, um, this stage to thank uh, Michael and, and his club log team, Alan, and there's a, there's a bunch of guy there, guys there for uh, helping us out with this. Uh, we do not have access to club log, as we mentioned last year. We, we submit a query to club log. Club log does some uh, checking uh, and then prov uh, provides us with um, a yay or an a. We do not, there's no, uh, there's no, um, we do not, um, in nowhere is affecting the integrity either of the club log database, our database, or our credit system. Okay. For it. Right. Believe it or not, there was quite an increase in credits as a result of the IOTA contest. Under the old system, um, I think it it didn't attract a lot of priority, but under the new sequence sequencing of uh, making your application, you were invited to press the button for IOTA contest credits, and a lot, uh, a lot more IOTA contest credits have been achieved. And who benefits most from all this? Russian and Ukrainian users benefit very considerably. We have a lot of new applications from them. You wouldn't believe how many <coughs> Russian and Ukrainian stations there are. Uh, if, you're, if you're regularly on the air, you will know in the pileups. But believe it or not, interestingly, Germany, which is, has most of the applications which we, we have, if you look at where the German stations live or have lived in the past, believe it or not, most are from East Germany. They seem to value the program because of historical reasons where they weren't able to get QSL cards and now they're able to get credits as a result of QSL matching. 
We have a lot of hybrid applications, and that I'm sure will continue. Are you surprised that old timers prefer to submit QSL cards? Uh, they seem to run a mile. This was last last January. They seem to run a mile at the idea of of submitting uh, a QSO match, and therefore all the. It, it, you know, it was quite amusing actually that the, the extent to which uh, you could see the preference um, that they would love to. It's only as a last resort if they haven't got the card that they would go for the QSO match. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, first time entrants, believe it or not, submit QSO matches as a first preference. No problem. And of course, QSO matches are less expensive. If you look at the cost of sending for a direct card, there is a ratio possibly even of 1 to 30 in the cost. For a credit on on, on, on the IOTA database, it costs you uh, 12p, and if you're a member of the society, which I'm sure you all are, uh, it will cost you 8p a credit. But if you have to get that card direct, it will cost you $5 or more. And you may not get the card as well. So, in the period of 12 months, we've had significant growth program viability, and financial security. And we hopefully we have a, a much happier IOTA community. Now, we're going to be brave. Possible subjects for discussion. We're going to suggest some awkward ones. Awkward for us, not awkward for you. Uh, so... Who wants to go with uh, one and see which one you want? Uh, shall we start actually with the LOTW one? Because I think that might be quite popular. Um, Michael Wells was over in America talking to ARRL. They had a, an official board meeting and he put IOTA on the agenda. And apparently it went very well. And uh, he's written to us back that they're very positive. ARRL want to help through LOTW. They want to help us. Um, there are one. I mean, the email was only four lines long, so it didn't give us any inf real information. But we are hopeful and hope um, that we can get that additional information shortly. So our position on this is that in principle, we would be happy to have an arrangement with LOTW. We would need to know what is the benefit for LOTW, uh, LOTW in being linked in with us. I assume it would go through the club log mechanism rather than an additional direct line to IOTA. Um, but we would obviously need, as a company, we need to know what uh, what the benefit will be, what the commits are on either side. There is some suggestion that it might not be as expensive as we thought, um, because originally in various discussions I've had with them, they have said, well, your starting position is 12 cents a, a credit. Um, and that would be in addition to our charge, so it would possibly be doubling our charge. So we need to know there is a possibility that uh, um, they may not raise any charge. So we need to know that. But in principle, we want to go down that route. Is there any comment from any of you about that? Or about any of the other? Or about any well, of the we'll other? Well, we'll come on to the others. Uh, <laughs> okay. We've got seven minutes. Yes, no comments? Okay, open to you. The other ones on the subject list do you want to talk? Do you want me to talk about? Why not all matches? Sorry? What was the question again? Sorry, I didn't hear. Why not all matches? 
More, more matches, that's for you. More well, matches on Club Lock. More matches. Uh, why, why aren't there more matches on Club Lock? Over to you. Iron more matches on Club Lock. Uh, can you narrow the, or specify a little bit what you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> what exactly are you referring to? Well, In plain words, yes. You know. The retask. Yeah. Right. Oh, I asked Charles too, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not sure I understand. But basically, yeah. Uh, so if you've asked Tim yeah. to provide his credits to the QSL manager, yeah. have you approached other people and asked them to give theirs? Have yeah. We have, uh, okay, so the, the way this uh, QSL uh, matching was, I, I have to be very short because there will be lots of other questions, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> we had established, we, we, we tried to, um, to look for, uh, for the cross section between the 60,000 data set, data, um, well, operations, now we know what an operation is, in our database, and whatever Club Lock had. And we're looking initially for just call signs. Get the call signs that match what's now database. We no idea of the times, no idea if there's our island operations or somebody used that call sign 20 years earlier or whatever. And then we went one by one by one, you know, and looked at all the information available to decide whether there's a reliable, thing. Once we did that, we went to the next uh, you know, uh, issue where we thought that some might be, but we had to approach either the operators or the or their managers to, to see you know, what is that, uh, you know, if the two actually are indeed operations or not, if I ride or not. Or, you know. Some of the guys replied, um, some of them didn't. And we had up to, in some cases, five or six requests, and they didn't. So at that point, that was put on the back burner. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, Mike, uh, uh, Martin um, uh, G3ZAY um, volunteered to take it further. So there's a process which I don't think is going to result in a lot, of, um, a lot more data. Uh, but I, I do believe that we should have at least well, on the order of 20% more, maybe 30% more, uh, if we had all the funny names of, of logs over the years, uh, and we're going to do that. But um, if you know someone who's guilty, let me know, and we'll get on to him. Um, in, in any case, uh, we've done in the... So it appears that the large majority of these operations are... We didn't track him like that. Roger wanted, but I, I didn't. I just took everything that was available at Cloudlog that we could possibly identify. Uh, they're largely, I would say, about 85% of them at least are in the, uh, most, on the most wanted uh, less than 50%. So there would be some operations for which we have logs. There are probably more than that. Probably more than 90% of them would be uh, most wanted, uh, less than 50%. So these are the logs currently there just because this is what we have been able to reliably identify. Uh, I know that Charles has, for instance, a relatively big problem because for some of the logs, he would have to go and painstakingly look exactly what was the time when a particular call sign was used, which he has from probably three islands or something, um, sometimes on paper logs. Uh, you know, it, it's not easy and to convert them. And so, um, yeah, we, yeah, this is a working progress. It will probably be for the next five years. And, you know, but if, we, if every year we're adding, to begin with, uh, let's say about 300, maybe 350, uh, well, then in uh, 20 years should be 70,000 only, only from this. Now, if we can expand it to the more than 50% uh, and club log, uh, you know, uh, kicks in, we should have more. Well, that would be a relatively, uh, and I'll be very mild, um, somewhat uh, they wouldn't know what they were doing. Um, what they have to do is well, to... Know what they're doing because they have to delete the log. No, they don't. Yeah, they no. Do because they have to 
No, they don't. Not for club law, but for their QSL purposes, they're going to. Otherwise, yeah. they don't. Because otherwise, I, I wouldn't be standing here to, to tell you they don't. I'll exp Let's suppose that the call sign is you've YB. Got, you've got one minute. Yeah. YB, 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 8A, YB 8 Oscar, right? For example, it was in, on, from two islands. Next year, they use again that from other islands, other IOTAs, maybe five. Same call sign, YB8 Oscar. They can make a log and update it however they want it at Club Log for OQRS purposes. I don't care of that. And IOTA, um, uh, QSO matching, doesn't care for that. But there should be one overall log. Well, incidentally, we, we, we will get to those funny things as well. But there should be one single log, YB8 Oscar, which does not have to be open for OQRS. Should have everything that that call sign has ever been used for. And by time, we will filter exactly what, what we need to do. So that's, that's how we operate now. How would we, sorry, how would we get that log to you then? No, you don't get it to me. You, get it to, you upload it to Cloudlog. We don't get anything. We don't know what the data is. I, I'm not going <laughs> to look. In, in, this is a private. Uh, the integrity of the log has to be kept. We do not see the logs. Well, I see some logs, mine. But, yeah. It makes sense, yes. For yeah. IOTA, yeah. But it doesn't make sense for the QSL work that the, the team's got to do. Can we, Why not? Can we continue this? They can put a delay afterwards. on it if they want to do the QSL work. Like, for example, Charles doesn't have to offer um, um, uh, um, you know, access to that log for six months or a year for whatever he wants. So the Q, for QSO, but three years down the road, five years down the road, some of, the, some of these logs are probably, I don't know, 15 years old. We're impinging on the next lecture. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Right.